Just do crazy cold opens. <laughs> All right, welcome one. Welcome all. We're live tonight. Actually, it's not nighttime. What are, we're mid afternoon live on Upstream here with Alex and Blaze. Holiday season's in full uh, effect. I'm kind of dressed for the occasion. Blaze is too. You just can't see him ever. Which <laughs> he's he's always in the holiday spirit, actually. But uh, Alex, are you ready for the Christmas holiday, man? I am. This year we actually did Secret Secret Santa, which is nice because it's yeah, a pain to just... buy gifts for everyone. Yep. So I just had to buy one gift for one person, and um, and it was more of a meaningful gift than it was than it would be if I were to buy gifts for everyone. And like my aunt, I don't know what she likes, and all these different things. So it should be oh, interesting. Yeah, I really appreciate your gift, buddy. <laughs> All, all, all aunts appreciate Victoria's Secret, Alex. Oh, I mean, that's true. That's the, that's that's the go-to, isn't it? Yeah. Like Macy's, J.C. Penney. Anyway, we won't go too far into our shopping list, but we have kind of an interesting week in BlackBerry, gentlemen. It's been a shorter week for us in terms of the coverage, but Blaze, I've seen you on the on Crackberry just slamming out different press releases and different bits of news, covering obviously the repercussions and the the fallout. Those are probably more negative words than they need to be. Uh, following <laughs> Black, BlackBerry's earnings for Q3 of fiscal 2017, did you happen to? Uh, I know you and you and I were awake around that time. Uh, Alex, you you don't listen in anymore, right? Even though you're an investor, you don't really uh, tap into those earnings, do you? No, I mean, I think if they had something like really exciting going on, then I would definitely tune in. It's just like really nothing crazy. I wasn't expecting anything crazy to be happening. They're still kind of going through this transition. Um, so I, there's no really, really, like, I wasn't excited. Sometimes in the past, like, I've been excited. Like, it's Christmas morning. I wake up early and, like, listen to it. I just wasn't feeling it this time, so <laughs> it'll come back. Yeah, I mean, I honestly wasn't expecting anything, but I got a lot more than I expected, actually, from the news event. I don't know. It seems like in the past couple quarters, maybe just 2016 in general, Blackbird seems to be better about, like, not piecemealing stuff out there in terms of news and headlines like they're consolidating stuff to announce with the earnings and it kind of feels a little bit more meaningful that they're releasing all these things as opposed to just oh yeah we heard about that two months ago and and now it's going into effect you know like that's kind of what killed the lg phone right the v20 came out to market in a press release but never actually hit the market right it took a while to actually come out and that kind of fizzled out a lot of the hype that was going around now blackberry is focusing that stuff around their earnings call Blaze, out of all the stuff that was announced post earnings, what stuck out to you the most that was actually interesting? Uh, I don't know what came out post earnings. Uh, well, I mean, they launched the BlackBerry Secure thing. That was huge for them. That was technically after the quarter closed. And the BlackBerry Innovation Center. I mean, these things all happen right before the actual announcement. Every, Pretty much everything meaningful happened before the actual announcement of the earnings, but uh, the BlackBerry Innovation Center in Ottawa, that was interesting to see. Um, the other, I mean, the key thing that basically is at the top of my list is, uh, you know, the, the software licensing agreement with TCL and everything that's going to happen with that going forward. Um, also, I mean, the mentions of the uh, the Indonesian device launching at some point in time in January that was that was kind of like buried within the earnings. I think that was I think that was kind of like one of the key things that I noticed about this earnings is that this was the first earnings call and announcement where they basically strayed away from sort of any talk of devices as much as possible. They still had some device talk buried in there. Um, but it, even even that little tiny bit wasn't really huge news or information that was put forth. And I think this, the secondary largest part of that is that a lot of the investors as well, and essentially the media too, um, they strayed away from any of the device talk too. It was like, the, this is the earnings call where people finally realize that BlackBerry is now a software company and they they let up on talking about any sort of hardware profitability or anything like that. I mean, a few mentions got it got tossed out there, but other than that, this was the, the really the first earnings call where they they didn't get too deep into the hardware. Like we we don't even technically know how many devices were sold at this point because they didn't even break that out. Um, 
Of course, they have a history of not breaking that out, but nobody else even decided to dig into that to figure it out. So it really is, uh, you know, one of the sticking points that I, I think that most people are starting to realize that BlackBerry is a software company and they need to stop paying attention to the hardware. Um, that was essentially the key highlight for me, really. I agree. I think one of the things that was really impactful was that everyone seemed to be in in the same accord with why they were there, right? What they were looking for from BlackBerry. And everyone's starting to ask the question, you know, where are the revenues coming from? And John Chen continues to reiterate software, software, software is where that's going to be. I think that one of the, the key points for me is that it seems like they've offset the decline of service access fees with the software initiatives that they currently have in place. So they basically stemmed the loss of revenue from a software perspective by bringing in new initiatives and through their M&A strategy and whatnot to actually do that. And now what's interesting to me at least is that they're going ahead and now building on all those things. So like BlackBerry UEM, BlackBerry Secure, like Blaze mentioned, all those types of enterprise rollouts are really positive for them. I even saw on the BlackBerry developer channel that they have like a whole developer portal now for app developers specifically for enterprise apps which was a highlight in one of the interviews we saw from John Chen where he talked about you know, apps being the real reason why that good acquisition was made, that they had a lot of the, the endpoint management stuff down, but actually working and getting the apps in there as well was something that good really helped supplement for them. So it was a really positive earnings. I think we're looking now to see where that growth is going to happen. They've integrated everything. Can they build on the business that they have now? Alex, do you think that BlackBerry focusing on software is something they're going to be, I guess, a legendary at, you know? Are they going to be remembered as a software company, especially as they go into IoT and and into this broader thing, uh, uh, this broader focus? I mean, uh, Blaze was talking about the autonomous stuff that they're doing in in, uh, in Ottawa now, which is pretty cool too, right? That stuff's interesting with the autonomous vehicles. Do you think BlackBerry may rebrand themselves in a sense in the mindshare? because of these different moves that they've made into the software space? Yeah, I mean, I think it's been a consistent rebranding in a sense. I was just having a conversation uh, with my stepdad just the other day, and we were talking about a few companies and like why tech companies are so highly valued. And a lot of the tech companies that are highly valued, they have a lot of software in place. Software is very scalable and you don't need that many employees. So we were talking about the CRM system that we use. They have about 100 employees and they're probably doing you know between 50 and 100 million a year so that's kind of each employee you're doing about a million dollars a year but you can do that with software whereas when you're talking about hardware there's so much branding and advertising that goes into that that yes you can make sick money if you're someone like apple and you have that brand but for blackberry the amount of money they'd have to spend in advertising to get to a point where they are and then it's also not necessarily recurring. One year you might have a great phone, the next year you might not have that great of a phone. Or maybe the phone was so great that year, the next year there's no reason for people to upgrade. Whereas software, what I really liked from the, the earnings call is approximately 80% of the third quarter software and service segment revenue was recurring. Like that's a big deal. Businesses focusing on recurring revenue versus like we're going to try and do really well for this quarter um, and we're just going to try and sell a lot of devices. That's kind of a one-off thing. Whereas recurring revenue, that means next month, chances are they're going to get that same recurring revenue unless they lose like a big account. But that's what's so great about software. So I don't really know because a lot of like really BlackBerry is an enterprise focused company and they, they kind of always have been. But now that they are more and more, it it's not necessarily going to be that consumer branding front that they need to change. I think enterprise is a whole different world of itself that people in the enterprise space were, who have you know over a thousand employees they know blackberry is an option and they're going to look into it and blackberry is probably going to be sending their sales teams over to them or advertising toward them so i i think a lot of this really comes back to what we've talked a lot about that it, their branding and, and everything like that doesn't matter as much to the consumer as it does for enterprise because that's where most of the revenue is coming from right now it's almost like and is going to sound super hardware partners who now have taken on the brand through licensing. They let TCL do the press and the pump for what's to come from them in CES and the BlackBerry smartphones. So I found that whole press release and the way that they've managed that relationship to be really, really positive. And I think that's exactly the type of thing BlackBerry needs so they can keep the focus on the software, keep the focus on what they do best and let 
someone else market and push and brand and do all that other stuff for them. I think it's going to be a good thing for them. Do you think this TCL uh, kind of speaking up more for BlackBerry in that sense is a positive thing, Blaze, or do you think the message should come from BlackBerry? No, I think uh, I think it should come from TCL because uh, you know basically they're the ones that are handling things now, and if BlackBerry continues to push the message, then that doesn't really help them in their uh, in their whole new black uh, software is a new BlackBerry message, right? Like it, it basically comes down to okay, now we're starting to get some clearer messaging as to what is actually driving BlackBerry and what is happening with TCL because before. It was basically BlackBerry was pushing out these TCL devices with the DTEC50 and the DTEC60, but now TCL is actually going to be pushing these devices out. They're using their own corporate channels to be able to go ahead and market the BlackBerry brand, and there's no longer, you know, that confusion between, you know, who is actually making these devices and, and where the messaging is coming from. Like I know if I want to talk devices at this point in time. I'm not emailing anyone at BlackBerry to be able to go ahead and do that, right? Um, I'm emailing people at TCL to be able to go ahead and get these discussions going because they are the ones that are operating right now. And as 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 little as that sounds, right now it, it's going to expand. Um, you know, me working at, on crackberry and being able to go ahead and relay this information is going to extend out to other people as well because people will start realizing that blackberry are no longer associated with the hardware directly and they'll start referring to tcl and looking towards that direction and it really like i said it really just reiterates the message that you know software is a new blackberry they're done with the with the hardware division they're still somewhat involved with it but they're not as deep as what they were like I, like i said when it came down to the earnings call as well it, you know it was it was the first software focused rather than hardware focused earnings call and i think i think that messaging needs to continue any anything going forward should come directly from tcl it should come from those channels and not directly blackberry because that helps with the overall messaging and i mean i don't think it's a I don't think it's an overstatement to say that BlackBerry has, you know, the the waters were a little bit muddy when it came to the messaging behind it, but now they're starting to clear things up, and they're, and we see that with throughout out, uh, all of their messaging as well. Like all of the recent posts that have been happening on the BlackBerry blogs too, have all essentially been clarification posts, like BBM clarification posts, and. Uh, what's happening with the servers in Indonesia, and you know what's happening with the device side of things, and all that stuff has been pushed out. And I don't know, man. I think I think they're gearing up to to basically go ahead and have a good 2017, and basically just clear up whatever messaging that they have lingering, and hopefully they can do it properly and not not revert back to those muddy waters. And you know. I, I don't like mixed messaging, so hopefully they can they can continue with what they're doing and clear things up. It's very interesting what BlackBerry's done because we know this company was up for sale, so to speak, right? They were looking at offers and taking those in, having those conversations a couple years back, and then John Chen, Prem Watson, the investment from Fairfax, really repositioned the company to be able to focus on software. I find it so interesting that now we're seeing BlackBerry offload a lot of the the busy work behind maintaining this consumer focus. They've really reoriented themselves to focus on the enterprise. And I think Blaze with TCL going out there and and handling that consumer aspect and MTech partnering with BBM to handle that consumer aspect, I think there's a lot of growth opportunity. Like I'm honestly like semi hyped for this this brand deal, although I'm also a little skeptical, right? I mean, we saw TCL do a deal with Palm and we haven't seen anything new Palm, even though that was supposedly supposed to come, right? I wonder if now BlackBerry has suppositioned that and and, and now that's what we're looking to see. But uh, BlackBerry sent me one of these bad boys. This is a, a DTEC 60 and I got some U-Carbon skins on it. And I, I admire this device a lot just from the build quality and what TCL has done. And Blaze, you've been using one. Alex hasn't had the, the the privilege to, uh, yeah. to 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 use one, but this is darn good hardware, and it's also very competitive. I mean, four ninety nine for this, whereas the low end version of this in like a Pixel is seven fifty almost. You know, uh, I think you get a lot of value for what you you see here, 
It's just no one's going to buy a Alcatel Idol 4S relative to the brand positioning in North America. They're number four. They're doing really well in the lower end markets, in the sub 200 market. If BlackBerry can help them capture some of that higher end market, I think it has a lot of potential. I think something we're kind of overlooking in all of this is patents, 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 right? TCL talked about in one of their little press release teasers that they want to be innovative. They're going to boldly go where no smartphone maker has gone before, right? Yeah, there's and, a lot of bold talk there. <laughs> Right. And then, you know, we see these teases about a QWERTY device and the typewriter and, and all these things coming from Steve. And I, I, I think to myself, you know, BlackBerry has all these patents that they're sitting on for stuff, right? And they're not, they can't, right? They, they can't do anything with them because that's not their focus anymore. However, now they have a partner, a powerful partner, a Chinese partner who has the distribution and the capabilities to actually leverage those patents and potentially do new and innovative things with them, right? And I think Mercury may be a first show of that and subsequent devices to come. And then there's still the opportunity of, you know, them finally letting go of BB10, saying, yes, it's end of life, letting it go, and then potentially being able to license it from there on out to someone else. Like we see now, who's maintaining BBM? MTech. Who's maintaining BlackBerry hardware? TCL. Who could potentially help them in other aspects of that business maintain those relationships that necessarily don't fit their focus, but help expand on it, you know? I'm real excited about that stuff. Uh, I think someone leveraging keyboard patents and, and doing something innovative is something that needs to happen in this market. I, I, I don't think the world is yet ready to let go of physical keyboards. I know the market has moved us past that point. But I still feel like there are a lot of people who have wanted a good keyboard experience and just haven't really been able to find something that suits all their needs. Like Priv, Alex, so you were drawn to the Priv for your for the keyboard initially, right? Oh, but still, there were compromises that you had to make to get that experience that that kind of tarnished it for you. I think there is a way for the BlackBerry and or TCL to kind of get together and nail what that experience looks like. What about what about you, Blaze? Do you think a keyboard is is necessary? Like, do you expect TCL to leverage some of those things and and build blackberry devices or do you think they're going to really homogenize blackberry into just another vendor that does slabs no no i think yeah i think they're gonna make use of the keyboard as much as possible um maybe not in in like um you know grand grand scheme of things it's probably not going to be a bigger portion of their line but they're definitely going to go ahead and put some of that stuff into the line and make those devices available um, let's just say I don't think that they're going to mass produce these devices. I think they're going to keep them scaled back to manageable levels and make them available, but they're not going to overproduce them and, and you know flood the market and start losing money on those devices by overbuilding them. I think um, I think they'll still be available. They'll still be made, but they'll keep keep the production levels down, but still have them accessible to people um, because we know that, like you said, the the, the market has moved past. Um, you know, keyboard devices, but that that audience that is out there, and you know, even though it's a niche audience, it's still a, a, a very loving audience. Like the people who are hardcore on, on the keyboards really want their keyboards, and they really want them to continue. So it doesn't make sense to essentially take something out of the market that could be potentially profitable for them, but you know, and replace it with with just another slab device but if they keep the production levels down and they keep the cost levels down they can eventually go ahead and start making money off of those devices because they're creating a little bit of a demand for it the market is still out there in somewhat of a, a smaller capacity but they're not losing any money by overbuilding like blackberry did right but the z10 the z10 <laughs> it's <laughs> it it's it's so funny because uh my mom was on a Z10. My dad was on a Passport, and you know, they're asking me, "Well, you know, I might need to get a phone, but like, darn, the Passport and the Z10 are still holding up really well." And I'm like, "Yeah, it's it's three years. Like, you need to move on. You know, <laughs> two or three years for, for some of those phones. It's like you need to kind of get with the times. I mean, you're gonna lose out on a lot of the new services that are coming that really help uh, make mobility easy and fun if you stay on BlackBerry 10. And it was a hard sell because." it works and when using my SE using 10.3.3 I mean they're so so good but at the same point you want to be able to access you know Pandora easily and some of those other things without having to go to like an Amazon store or going through a third-party route so 
I suggested my father go pick up some BlackBerry devices, and they ended up going both for DTEK 50s, and they love it so far. Cool. And, I, and I, told my, I told my father, I was like, you know, that is the start of something new for BlackBerry. That DTEK 50 is TCL's first entry into a branded BlackBerry device. And if you like that, imagine where we're going to be in a couple of years from now, right? Just seeing how competitive and how agile BlackBerry's been releasing what now? Three phones in maybe the matter of less than, you know, a year. It's going to be impressive, I think. And I think we're going to see even more Blackberries come from other regions and, and more talks of people really getting what they need from a Blackberry in different parts of the world. Yeah, it's like really Indonesia exciting. and India. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I think on our, on our last after show, we talked about like the just the potential of BBM in Indonesia advertising a Blackberry, like cross brand, uh, you know, advertising. It's huge there, you know. Imagine if the BBM ads that people were seeing in Indonesia were for Blackberry devices and like, what? There's a Blackberry device? I mean, that's the stuff that will help generate sales for sure. Yes. Yeah. I just want to touch on the whole like Palm and TCL correlation and Blackberry again, just to put something out there. Um, because it has been brought up several times, I believe I've brought it up myself multiple times because there there is a little bit of a correlation between what is happening there with BlackBerry and what is happened what happened with Palm, um, and the whole TCL agreement. However, it's not a direct correlation. You can't you can't make the exact same comparisons because when you look at the history of Palm and stuff like that, when you when you look at how that situation rolled itself out. Um, BlackBerry has essentially a working agreement with TCL. They they're they're working together to go ahead and create these devices and make sure that they get to market and make sure that the branding is appropriate. When TCL purchased Palm, they purchased nothing but a trademark. It, HP already pilfered everything that was useful out of Palm before TCL ever even got to it. Right, so mm -hmm. there's really nothing left of Palm for TCL to essentially manage you know it's just literally a trademark name tcl could go ahead put together uh you know some android device put the palm brand on it but everything about that phone other than the branding would still be a tcl product right the difference when it comes down to blackberry is that with blackberry and tcl you're getting a tcl device but you're getting blackberry software on the inside so there's still a very large portion of BlackBerry involved with that actual device. So, yeah, you can make the correlation between Palm and TCL and BlackBerry and say that the scenario is starting to look similar, but it's not the exact same scenario. It just those pieces are entirely different when you when you take a look at what actually happened throughout history. Um, so, yeah, like I said, I get the correlation. I get why people would bring it up. But it's not the exact same scenario. You can't you can't put them put them together and say the exact same thing is playing out. And that's good. That makes me even more comfortable in the relationship, honestly, because you want BlackBerry to obviously succeed and continue to do things. I'm I'm more interested to see kind of the positioning of where Alcatel will stand in all of this. Yeah. Re, you know, because BlackBerry is a powerful brand. It still is. It has a global appeal, and you know, potentially there's a, a way where the two can live synergistically, but I'm not sh necessarily sure if that's the case, you know? I yeah, guess we gotta, we, we gotta see. I wonder if the Alcatel brand just disappears from North America and then it starts to become all BlackBerry brands. Mm -hmm. Or I think some other regions, you know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah, I could see it kind of just going off <laughs> into the corner, so to speak. <laughs> but, you know, it, something else that's interesting is the, the opportunity now for BlackBerry in China I think we talk a lot about the North American opportunity, but you know, there's a way that TCL can reintroduce the BlackBerry brand in their own home region as well, yeah. which is, I think, another big and powerful opportunity that BlackBerry has as well. And beyond this, I think as other things expand, like BBM channels continues to get growth, we see the migration of those servers and you know the different realignment of the assets that they have for cross-platform. I think a lot of that feeds into overall BlackBerry getting stronger around the world, and I find that's a really positive thing. Alex, I, I know we've talked in the past about like the region focus maybe stifling some of BlackBerry's growth, you know, focusing strictly on one or two regions at first, and then kind of billowing billowing out from there. Do you think that there should be a little bit of uh, separation between their focus when it comes to cross-platform? 
because I know it's already so broken. Like we have Messenger over in in North America, which is really big, and then other markets have you know Line and WeChat and all these other solutions. Do you think it's good the way that the BBM strategy has rolled out in correlation with kind of what they're doing at BlackBerry at the core? I mean, the fact they're focusing like in India and focusing somewhere where they can get a lot of the market and actually kind of thrive in there because if they're going to just, I mean, between that, I, I really am genuinely curious to hear someone in enterprise that uses like BBM protected and actually uses BBM for enterprise because, I mean, even right now we're using Slack and it's like, I, I can't really envision someone being on a computer or having to for, force use their cell phone to be using BBM to communicate. On the go, it makes sense, but that's what I'm definitely curious about. So aside from that, more consumer market in India, them really focusing on that, hammering it out, and then making deals and agreements to make money from BBM, it makes sense there. Um, if they were to say, you know, we're going to be competing with WhatsApp, it doesn't make any sense. Like WhatsApp already has their foothold here. Facebook Messenger already has their foothold here. Otherwise, it's just like text messaging. So they need to focus in these areas. You kind of need to niche up a little bit and then focus. And that's the only way that you can really grow. Because if you go too wide, because, yeah, BBM could be around the world. That's fine. But, you know, unless you have the, the billions of dollars in marketing that you'd have to spend to do that. And even then, people won't use it if their friends aren't using it. And marketing won't force your friends to use it. Um, so I think it makes sense what they're doing. Um, I, I really am just really curious about the enterprise bit of BBM. I, I do want to know to what extent it's being used in enterprise realistically. So uh, the, well, there's a really good asset out there that I wish BlackBerry put out more because a lot of people don't know. And for those of you watching who are with us live, I'm actually going to post this link in our little live chat conversation. But this is actually a portal on the enterprise side of BlackBerry's website for customer success stories. And there are tons, which is one, a good thing, right? There's tons of customers willing to share the positive experience they have with BlackBerry. Even look at what Moda Graphics and BlackBerry IoT and Radar are doing. I think you kind of get the same thing. Titanium booking uh, BlackBerry Radar for their transit and, and asset tracking. Again, really positive stuff. Seeing that BlackBerry is innovating in the space and wanting to support a local brand. I think all of that is super, super important for BlackBerry. If you go into this customer success story portal, you're able to read through how people are finding success with BlackBerry products. And in there, right at the top, you'll find Global Medic. That's actually a hospital using BBM Enterprise in a mobile way on tablets, on different uh, devices that people and staffing have. So in emergencies, they can all get alerts and can easily communicate with teams that are on the go, that aren't at a desktop. You know, There is a customer base out there that needs the regulatory um, criteria that BBM for Enterprise has. And it's now booking more of those, right? And getting more of those customers out there. It's very tough, I think, to, to go at some of the other enterprise messengers that are out there because they're so invested already, right? Skype for Business is another one that's really, really well pro proliferated out there. But it doesn't necessarily have the ease of use that you're wanting. And then on the back end side of that, can you audit it, right? Can we get logs of the conversations and all the other security certifications and parameters for that stuff to operate? I think it's really, really impactful that BlackBerry keeps telling these stories because ultimately that's what's going to drive others to maybe look at the business and see, well, it worked for them. It may work for me as well. Do you have any case studies, Alex, of, of your, your, your stuff? Like I never saw a case study for web design cheat sheet aside for uh, what's in the I the do. portfolio <laughs> section of Variflow. No, I have, a, <laughs> I have a case study on my website for it. Case studies are are definitely good. Um, seeing something like this, it makes sense. And I think uh, for for like the mass alerts for BBM to be something to to be used in that way, it makes sense. Um, out of curiosity, does every single person have to have BBM installed on their phone in order for this to be utilized? Then. So everyone within for the global medic case that you were talking about. So ad hoc and, and BBM enterprise are two different things, right? Oh, I'm okay. sure ad, ad hoc, okay. ad, yeah, yeah. right? Ad hoc would be more of again being able to send those broader messages out. But you can imagine when you install BlackBerry UEM or any of that client software, you can then access other assets that have been purchased through your you know, through the stack. So, you, you know, the there's a lot of challenges, I think, that come about where you want to create mobile communication in a productive way, but you also don't want so much 
there that it can become intrusive, like an emergency alert. I'm sure you can't opt into that or opt out of it, right? Yeah. You're probably going to get that or not because your device is synced up to the whole infrastructure. Whereas with BBM Enterprise, that's something you know you can get a group or team of five or six people on together and be able to coordinate very easily where you need to be at certain times and send reliable communications, right? That's stuff that's sent through BlackBerry's network, which is something John Chen also kind of talked about as well. But as we were talking about like the knock and how BlackBerry can leverage those better in the future, do you think there's other assets within BlackBerry that they could continue to kind of work on? I mean, what else could we imagine being done with the BlackBerry infrastructure that they have right now? Well, I mean, it, pretty much everything with the um, surrounding QNX could be filtered directly through there. I mean, the secure OTAs for cars and all of that stuff could be utilized. And they do, to a certain extent, utilize all of that already. But um, one thing that, that I believe John, John Chen actually mentioned it is that they have a lot of stuff in the pipeline uh, coming for the network operation center usage. But in order to be able to go ahead and fully um, put it to put it to realization, they have to essentially go ahead and make sure that everything is upgraded in terms of of the the hardware that they're utilizing the security aspect of it all make sure that everything is brand new because i mean and when you when you think about it the network operations center wasn't necessarily when they designed it it wasn't necessarily built for everything that we're envisioning now in terms of iot so it, it makes me wonder like how how much infrastructure growth has gone or taken place over the years to be able to go ahead and make sure that the network operation center is up to date and can handle these new capabilities and these new things and uh, new additions that they they want to be able to go ahead and utilize it for. I mean, uh, one of the biggest things, at least one of the biggest things that I know of, um, happened during the launch of BlackBerry 10. The, the network operation center was updated during the launch of BlackBerry 10 because it had a whole bunch of new stuff to be able to go ahead and utilize as well, right? Um, even though that the, the devices don't necessarily, uh, they don't, they, they never connected to the, the network operation center in the exact same manner, it, they still communicated with the network operation center and the network operation center wasn't, it needed to be upgraded to be able to go ahead and handle that information and that new data, that new data capabilities, right? Um, so I don't know. It's one of those things that they can definitely build on, but like John Chen said, they're gonna have to uh, have to take the time to be able to go ahead and build out the network operations center to be able to to make use of any of that stuff. Um, I don't know. There's a lot of things that they could utilize it for, though. I mean, when you start thinking about how content is delivered across networks and whether or not that information is actually secure that's where you you start opening doors to things that are are possibilities like there's so many things connecting to the internet now and as cliche as it is it's like iot is a big massive thing and nobody knows how to control it as of yet like we saw with um what was the name of that virus? The Mirai virus or whatever that basically took down the internet. That was because of all these connected devices that had essentially no security built into them. And I think that's something that BlackBerry is looking towards to be able to go ahead. Who knows? Maybe BlackBerry will essentially be the ones who, you know, come up with a scheme to be able to um, secure these devices and create a standard for these devices. There's a lot of room there for for exploration into those things to be able to go ahead and, and expand across every capability. Um, obviously, they would need partners and, and stuff to be able to go ahead and make that happen. But as of now, there is no standard protecting these devices. And I don't mm -hmm. think I don't think anybody, you know, even like at the government level or company level or anything like that has has a, a hundred percent grasp on what all this actually means as of yet. But mm -hmm. we're getting to the point where they, they have to get down to brass sacks and figure it out because it, if something is taking down the internet on a daily basis, that's not exactly a good scenario, you know? Like there there's there's nothing stopping you know, another virus from hitting all these IoT connected devices and taking down the internet again. And it could be used in more more uh, aggressive ways as well. Like, uh, you know, we see Russia hackings and everything else that's going on. So 
I mean, there's plenty of room for opportunity there, and I think if BlackBerry has has the has the capability to come up with some of these stuff, um, they can build standards. We know that they have the medical detect DT DT sec, that, yeah, that's out mm-hmm. there. So they can build standards. So it just uh, it just requires some, um, you know, putting the time in and getting everything working right. John Chen for president, 2020. <laughs> Am I no? I think it can happen, guys. That's how we'll get our standards. We need a strong Republican of, in John Chen to be uh, manning the fort. No, I think it's a. Uh, there's a lot of opportunity, like Blaze said, and it's good for BlackBerry now because they're finally looking to actually loot that opportunity and do something with it, right? I'll close out with Sean's question here. If you were sitting with the TCL board members, what advice would you provide in what not to do in regards to BlackBerry? If I were to answer this question, Sean, what would I tell them not to do? I would tell them not to be prudent, you know, not to be weak and fearful I would say go for it, you know, BlackBerry, it, it, go for that turnaround bit, you know, and don't be afraid of marketing and don't be afraid of spending some money and, and actually getting it out there. It, if you want to use this brand, use it, you know, don't, don't hold back like Heinz did <laughs> basically. I was going to say the same thing, only just not so eloquently. I was just basically <laughs> just going to say, don't be cheap. Put some money exactly. behind it. <laughs> Put some money behind it. Get the brand out there, and do what BlackBerry didn't do with it. So, yeah, and that's yeah. and that's really the thing where not having a brand name phone come out. Um, brand is really important. So something like BlackBerry, the fact that yes, a lot of people look at BlackBerry as like this dead company, or it's not. It's not. It's never going to be a negative brand in the sense of take a phone that has no brand or label and it's straight from China or somewhere versus a phone that has the BlackBerry brand on it, there's definitely markup that you can do for that. So they do, I agree entirely, they have to market it, um, utilize the brand, take advantage of it, and you know, take some of the, the potential profit and markup that you're going to have on these phones and put it into advertising. You know, BlackBerry didn't, but I think that that's, that's what we all agree on. Makes sense. I th- yeah, you got you to gotta take advantage of the beauty that BlackBerry is dead in the consumer mindset. And if you're going to be in the consumer space, revive it, bring it yeah. back, do, do what BlackBerry was unable to do because they didn't have the scale and, or, you know, the money to do so. I think that's going to wrap it up for us, gentlemen. Definitely, definitely look forward to more DTEC 60 content since, uh, since blaze never did a video, I'll get to one eventually. Hey, Give- like I said, BlackBerry didn't even do a video. So <laughs> exactly. I miss Donnie, right. Doing his hands on and stuff and unboxings. Those were great back in the day to right. really get you psyched and amped. Oh, the good old days, you know? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. That is for the holidays. Yep. That is, that is it. Yeah. We're, we're like almost into like Christmas Eve. Well, yeah. happy yeah. Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, and- Merry Christmas, whatever. Yeah, yeah, everything. Yeah, happy holidays, guys.